Welcome to Sino-US Observation. Here, you can learn about the hot events between China and the US. If you are interested, don't forget to follow our channel. I believe everyone has seen the relevant reports about US President Biden signing the Chips and Science Act at the White House. The bill provides huge subsidies to the domestic chip industry in the United States and requires any company that receives subsidies from the United States to manufacture chips in the United States. So will this chip bill lead to dramatic changes in the semiconductor industry? From the point of view of the composition of the bill, the content of the chips section is the most important. Among them, about 52.7 billion US dollars are invested in semiconductor manufacturing and research and development. At the same time, the bill will also provide 25% tax credits to companies building chip factories in the United States, worth about 24 billion US dollars. In addition to chips, the bill also authorizes about $200 billion in funding to promote scientific research and innovation in the United States in the next 10 years in fields such as artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and robotics. It took about three years from the formation of the bill to the implementation of the bill, and the support strategy for semiconductors has attracted the most attention. Some experts said that the CHIP and Science Act is one of the most influential and far-reaching bills in the history of the United States and it will also become the starting point for reshaping the global semiconductor landscape. The bill intends to strengthen the U.S.'s own position in the semiconductor industry chain, with particular attention to the production capacity and competitive situation of advanced manufacturing processes. In addition, although non-U.S. companies in other regions such as Europe will not be directly affected, key businesses involving manufacturing types such as equipment will still be restricted. It is worth noting that the bill also proposes targeted restrictive clauses, including prohibiting companies that receive subsidy funds from increasing the production capacity of advanced process chips in some specific countries for a period of 10 years, companies that violate the prohibition or fail to correct the violations, a full refund of the grant may be required. This means that if companies receive relevant subsidies, they may not be able to invest in semiconductor factories in China. In recent years, in the complex geopolitical and technological game, the regional self-sufficiency of the semiconductor industry chain has become a trend, the globalized industry has also begun to deglobalization, and a new competition model is opening. The high subsidies of the U.S. government will also stimulate the pace of regional autonomy. Specific to the bill, the United States has formulated a very detailed plan. The CHIP bill provides US$52.7 billion US dollars for the development of the U.S. semiconductor industry chain, and is further subdivided into funds in four areas for subsidies. The first is that the U.S. CHIP fund is US$50 billion, US dollars, accounting for the vast majority of funds, of which US$39 billion US dollar will be used to encourage CHIP production, and US$11 billion US dollar will be used to subsidize CHIP research and development, including the establishment of technology centers. Second, it is a $2 billion U.S. chip defense fund to subsidize the production of critical chips related to national security. The third is the U.S. Chip International Technology Security and Innovation Fund with a total of $500 million to build a safe and reliable semiconductor supply chain. The fourth is the U.S. Chip Labor and Education Fund of $200 million to cultivate the semiconductor industry talent. From the proportion and use of the fund, it can be seen that chip manufacturing is the core focus of the United States. The United States currently produces only about 10% of semiconductors and lacks the most advanced chips, while the United States relies on East Asia to produce 75% of the world's products. A recent report by the Semiconductor Industry Association, SIA, shows that the total global market share of U.S. semiconductor companies in 2021 is 46% and the strength is still strong, but the share of domestic semiconductor manufacturing in the United States continues to decline from 57% in 2013, a drop of more than 10%. Therefore, the United States has adopted incentive measures at the national strategic level to support local manufacturing and increase its own production capacity. At the same time, problems such as lack of cores and the development of emerging markets have also aggravated the United States' actions. Some studies believe that the CHIP bill introduced by the U.S. government mainly benefits U.S. companies, especially U.S. companies with chip manufacturing capabilities. Native American chip manufacturing giants such as Intel and Global Foundries will be the biggest beneficiaries. Supporting leading companies will make it easier to achieve economies of scale and accelerate the realization of the United States' dream of American chips. 
Micron and other IDM companies with chip manufacturing capabilities are the second-tier beneficiaries. For the U.S. government, the expansion of IDM in the United States can lock more production capacity in the United States. For IDM companies, the company can use U.S. subsidies to expand its influence in the global semiconductor field. U.S. equipment companies related to chip manufacturing are the third-tier beneficiary group of the CHIP Act. With the improvement of U.S. chip manufacturing capabilities, U.S. semiconductor equipment companies will usher in a new development climax. Complaints about the loss of the Chinese market due to U.S. sanctions. International chip manufacturing companies such as TSMC and Samsung are the fourth-tier beneficiaries of the chip bill, and American chip design companies are indirect beneficiaries of the bill. Many semiconductor giants have made choices and put them into action. Wafer foundries and memory chip leaders have successively thrown out new plans for cooperation and investment. On August 8, semiconductor manufacturers Global Foundries and Qualcomm announced that the two parties will extend their existing strategic global long-term semiconductor manufacturing agreement until 2028, increasing the total purchase amount to $7.4 billion. US dollars. The agreement will ensure an adequate supply of wafers and commit to supporting U.S. manufacturing by expanding the capacity of GF semiconductor fabrication facilities in New York and Malta. On August 9, Micron announced that it will use the preferential policies of the U.S. government to invest an additional $40 billion in memory chip manufacturing by 2030. Micron said the investment will boost the global market share of U.S. memory chip production from less than 2% to 10% over the next 10 years. At the same time, information about Korean factories investing in the United States also appeared. At the end of July, SK Group, the parent company of South Korean memory chip giant SK Hynix, plans to increase its investment in the United States by $22 billion US dollars, covering semiconductors, power batteries, biotechnology, etc. field. Obviously, a new round of capacity expansion competition has begun. In recent years, the shortage of production capacity has accelerated the speed of production expansion of enterprises. Although the current situation of declining demand and partial surplus in the short term, the overall production capacity of semiconductors is still in short supply, and chip resources will be a long-term scarce product. At present, the choice of origin has become an important game point. With the introduction of production capacity in the future, the global semiconductor industry pattern may change. In general, at the same time as the implementation of the U.S. CHIP Act, the global policy and capital competition for the semiconductor industry is also continuing. The intention of each region to build a complete local industrial chain is more clear. With the example of the U.S. CHIP bill, Europe, Japan, South Korea and other regions will follow suit and launch their own semiconductor policies to maintain the strength of the local semiconductor industry chain. Under the premise of reshaping the global pattern, major semiconductor regions in the world must pay more attention to the autonomy, security and controllability of their own supply chains.